Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and there shall be afraid, pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land a desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Satan now have a history of deceiving everything the Most High have created. Satan now deceive a large population of the angels, unclean spirits, and mankind. The scriptures let us know that Satan even deceive himself. It's through deception Satan now operates. If mankind would not allow the lust of the flesh to dominate them, then Satan now wouldn't be successful at deceiving mankind. The people would be able to see clearly to recognize that Satanel is powerless and everything he promises he can't fulfill. Satanel know that he can't fulfill the promises he makes. That is why he explained to Adam that everyone who listened to his speech and accept his words would fall. Satanel can't fulfill his promises. But when Adam heard these words from him, he said unto him, Canst thou make me a garden as God made for me? Or canst thou clothe me in the same bright nature in which God hath clothed me? Where is the divine nature thou didst promise to give me? Where is that fair speech of thine thou didst hold with us at first when we were in the garden? Then Satan said unto Adam, Thinkest thou that when I have spoken to one about anything, I shall ever bring it to him or fulfill my word? Not so, for I myself have never even thought of obtaining what I ask. Therefore did I fall, and did I make you fall by that for which I myself fell, and with you also, whosoever accept my counsel falls thereby. History have shown how Satan now cannot fulfill the promises he makes. The only reason the other species of mankind have dominion on this earth today, the downfall of the indigenous black people gave the kingdom of darkness dominion. If the first man and woman didn't allow Satanel to beguile them, the earth wouldn't be in the hands of the wicked. Satanel didn't give the other species of mankind control over the earth. When Adam and Eve sinned, they handed the earth over to Satanel. Remember, the Most High made Adam Lord on earth. Adam had dominion over the earth. When Adam and Eve believed Satanel's lies, they handed their dominion over to Satanel. When Adam and Eve believed Satanel, they made Satanel their God and King. But now, O Adam, by reason of thy fall, thou art under my rule, and I am king over thee. Because thou hast hearkened to me, and hast transgressed against thy God, neither would there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised thee by thy God. Again he said, Inasmuch as we do not know the day agreed upon with thee by thy God, nor the hour in which thou shalt be delivered, for that reason will we multiply war and murder upon thee and thy seed after thee. And he was continuously in paradise, and the devil understood that I wanted to create another world, because Adam was Lord on earth to rule and control it. As you have heard from the scriptures, Satanel said that he was king over Adam. Satanel promised to war against Adam and his seed until the day the Most High deliver Adam and his seed. To the indigenous black people who wonder why are you the target? Why does everyone hate you? Why are you to blame for everything in this world when you're not the one initiating the wars and oppressing the people? You don't own any major corporations or media outlet that can change the people's negative perception of you. You no longer have dominion over the earth, yet you are to blame for everything bad that takes place on this earth. The reason you're the target, Satanel said he would wage war with Adam and his seed until the day the Most High deliver his people. Israelites, it's through knowledge will the just be delivered.
an hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. When you have knowledge, you will have the truth. The scripture said, the truth shall make you free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The reason so many Israelites and Gentiles perish, they perish from a lack of knowledge. The kingdom of darkness had dominion over the earth for a long time. They flooded the world with falsehoods and lies. The Satans know that the moment you obtain knowledge, you will be delivered from the many strongholds, giving the Satans access to you. The demonic covenants gave the kingdom of darkness access to you. Most of these evil covenants are established unknowingly. If we had the wisdom and understanding we are receiving today in the awakening, most of us wouldn't establish evil covenants with the kingdom of darkness. Majority of people would reject Satan's offers if they had knowledge and understanding, as well as the truth. Israelites, this is why it's important for you to not reject the truth that the Most High is making available at this time. If you reject the truth, the Most High will reject you. In addition, the Most High will put a strong delusion on you to make you believe the lies for rejecting the truth. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Israelites, you have to understand the truth of the Most High's words is not going to confirm demonic doctrines of devils. The truth will expose the doctrines. You also need to understand that the truth is not going to have anything in common with the beast system. Satan operates the beast system under falsehoods and lies. Therefore, the truth is not going to have anything in common with the beast culture. Satan now cannot successfully destroy and corrupt the seed of Adam while working with the righteous. Therefore, he deceived many through his wild speech to get many to follow him. The way Satan now got many of the angels to follow him was by making great promises to them. Satan now promised the angels who followed him great kingdoms. But now, O Adam, we will make known to thee what came upon us through him before his fall from heaven. He gathered together his hosts and deceived them, promising them to give them a great kingdom, a divine nature, and other promises he made them. His hosts believed that his words were true. So they yielded to him and renounced the glory of God. The angels who believe Satan's words denounced the Most High to follow Satan. Israelites, I hope you notice how the angels had to denounce the Most High to follow Satan. The scriptures is correct when they say no one can serve two masters. The angels who follow Satan had to denounce the Most High first before they could follow Satan. Adam and Eve did the exact same thing when they ate from the tree. They denounced the Most High unknowingly and made Satan their king. Today, many people are denouncing the Most High to follow Satan. Satan is deceiving many through religion. Most people believe being affiliated with certain religion will give them access to the coming kingdom. Some people are being deceived by Satan when he promises them money, a great name, power, women, large social media following, and countless other promises Satan is making in exchange for the people to follow him. Israelites, you have to open your eyes to see the deceptions. Through deception is how Satan convinced many people to do his will. The angels weren't exempt from Satan's deceptions, as well as the animals, unclean spirits, and mankind. Satan now was successful in deceiving the whole world. And the great dragon was cast out, an old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Israelites, I show you how the ancient fallen angel Satan made a career in deceiving the most highest creatures to help you understand that no one is off limits. Also to show you that we all have fallen short. If you can see how Satan now deceived everyone, you won't feel inadequate. The people who are enslaved to the spirit of pride can take the opportunity to cast out the spirit of pride to humble themselves. The awakening is here to give the generation alive and all who's hearing the truth of the Most High's words the opportunity to repent. 
The Most High is giving his people the time to turn their life around. The Most High want his people, the Israelites, to return to him. We all have been deceived. This is why it's important for the people who teach and prophesy to do the will of the Most High in a humble spirit. Some Israelites need to hear and see how the other creatures of the Most High were deceived for them to humble themselves. Just because the Most High have awakened you out of your slumber, it doesn't make you better than the Israelites and Gentiles held hostage in the house of bondage, the church. The Most High resists the proud and give grace to the humble. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Israelites, the first step to true repentance is to confess your sins. A prideful person won't confess his or her sins. It's very important for you to watch out for the spirit of pride at the last hour. Satanel's downfall is pride. Satan said in his heart that he would war with Adam and his seed. Satan created the beast system to oppress and war with all of Adam's descendants. Because Satan ruled in all the Gentile kingdoms of this world, everyone who bowed down to worship him, he gave them great kingdoms, power, and authority. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. The reason the other species of mankind was successful in taking every land from the indigenous black people all over the world, they bowed down and worshiped Satan. They took Satan's offers and believed his lies. Satan now had beguiled them just like he did the angels, unclean spirits, Adam and Eve. Because the other species of mankind worship Satan and does his will on the earth, Satan gave to them dominion, power, and authority. The same power and dominion Adam and Eve handed over to Satan now when they believe his lies. The other species of mankind is only successful because Satan now is the god of this world. Colonization was how Satan gave the seed of the fallen land inheritance to establish great kingdoms in this world. Last week, you heard how the dragon gave his power and seat to the beast. The multiple beasts that will rise on the earth are kings. Satan gave these kings his power and great authority. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, and his seat and great authority. Israelites, this is how Satan operates and controls this world. He gives the kings of the earth his power, authority, and dominion he stole from Adam and Eve. Behind every king on this earth, the kingdom of darkness is the power operating in them. The scriptures in the book of Jubilees confirm this to be true. The Most High said he put spirits of authority over the Gentile nations. And he sanctified it and gathered it from amongst all the children of men. For there are many nations and many peoples, and all are his. And over all have he placed spirits in authority to lead them astray from him. Behind every government, president, or any leader of a country is the kingdom of darkness. Every nation that ever had a righteous leader over them was killed and replaced with a puppet that will do the will of Satan. Israelites, I hope you can now understand the scriptures in the book of Ephesians that say, we wrestle not with flesh and blood. The people we see with our physical eyes are not in control. This is why we look at what's behind the scenes because the unseen things are eternal while the seen things are temporary. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Israelites, this is why I said to you in multiple messages, look behind the scenes. Just because you see Biden, Trump, Putin, Kamala, and the others, you truly fighting against the powers controlling them behind the scenes. 
You heard in the scriptures in the book of Matthew how Satan wanted to give the word of God all the kingdoms of this world if he would bow down to worship him. The scriptures reveal to us Satan had control over all the nations in this world. The book of Revelation revealed the dragon is the power behind the Antichrist, the first beast. How can the indigenous black people fight against the dragon, as well as the God of this world who openly said he will wage war with Adam and his seed until the day the Most High delivered them? Satan now is very bitter. The scripture said he's full of wrath. The scripture said, woe to the inhabitants of the earth for Satan have come down with great wrath because he knows he has a short time. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Israelites, you heard in the scripture how Satan have come down with great wrath. This wrath goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. Satan felt that Adam have taken his kingdom away from him. He put it in his heart to kill Adam and his seed. Satan believed if there's no one to inherit the earth, the Most High gave to Adam and Eve, the Most High would restore Satan and his host. But Satan, the hater of all good, thought within himself, whereas God has promised salvation to Adam by covenant, and that he would deliver him out of all the hardship that have befallen him, but has not promised me by covenant, and will not deliver me out of my hardship, nay, since he has promised him that he should make him and his seed dwell in the kingdom in which I once was, I will kill Adam. The earth shall be rid of him and shall be left to me alone, so that when he is dead, he may not have any seed left to inherit the kingdom that shall remain my own realm. God will then be in want of me and he will restore me to it with my hosts. Satan's hosts are the fallen angels that denounce the most high to follow him. They do everything Satan now tell them to do. After this, Satan called to his host, all which came to him and said unto him, O our Lord, what wilt thou do? He then said unto them, Ye know that this Adam, whom God created out of the dust, is he who has taken our kingdom. Come, let us gather together and kill him, or hurl a rock at him and Eve, and crush them under it. Satan doesn't operate alone. He has a host that help him accomplish his goal in destroying the seed of Adam. Israelites, this is the root cause to the hatred the indigenous black people have experienced in every generation. Satan used religion to mask his fury and diabolical plans to eliminate the seed of Adam from the face of this earth. A great majority of you believe the hate stems from racism. The truth is, racism is a distraction from the root cause to the hate. Israelites, behind the scenes is a spiritual power that hates you and wants to eliminate you from the face of this world. That is why you need the army of the Most High to fight against the dragon operating behind the Antichrist, the first beast, as well as all the other beasts that will rise on the earth. You need the Prince of Peace to fight against the Prince of this world. None of us have the ability to fight the dragon operating in the Antichrist. The dark powers and principalities we wrestle against won't fall without the Most High by our side. King David was successful in destroying the giant Goliath because he went to the battle in the name of the Most High. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. King David was successful because he had the God of our fathers helping him behind the scenes. Majority of you enter the battlefield in the name of the Messiah that came in his own name. Most of you don't even acknowledge the Father. You made the God of this world your Lord and Savior. That is why when Satan come against the indigenous black people, they fall. 
The indigenous black people is using the powers from the kingdom of darkness to cast out Satan. Israelites, Satan cannot cast out Satan. If Satan casts out Satan, he's divided against himself. If he's divided against himself, his kingdom would fall. The kingdom of darkness is very organized and united. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? The Satans deceive many people into believing the Most High, the God of Israel, is behind the scenes, standing with them in religion. That is false. Religion is another one of Satanel's deceptions. Israelites and Gentiles all over the world, you won't find the Most High, the God of Israel, in any religion. The kingdom of the Most High is within you. That is why you must worship and serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. We are the generation commanded by the Most High to serve him in spirit and in truth. Now that you're aware of the power operating in the nations behind the scenes, fighting against you, Israelites and indigenous black people all over the world, allow the Most High to renew your mind with truth. You're not fighting against mere men. You're fighting against principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, the spiritual wickedness in high places. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The time have come for the people of the Most High to return to the God of our fathers. That is how we will get the help that we need to stand against Satan L and his host. Satan has expanded his host. Satan's host is not just the fallen angels and unclean spirits. His host now consists of indigenous black people, Israelites, Gentiles, the seed of the fallen, and all creatures that allow themselves to be deceived by the ancient fallen angel. Israelites, now that you know is Satan operating behind the scenes in all the nations in this world, this brings us to the day of the Lord. We have been reviewing end time prophecies written in the scriptures found in the authorized Bible. As the end time generation living at the time where the gospel of the kingdom is being heard in all the kingdoms as a witness to all nation, we need to have the correct perspective of what's to come. The time have come for us to know what is coming our way. The Most High don't want us to be blindsided by the prophecies set to come to pass in the end times. Satan have deceived the whole world. The beast system is full of deception and lies told by the high level workers of iniquity sitting at the top of the pyramid. The spiritual wickedness in high places made a covenant with death. They hide behind their falsehoods and made lies their refuge. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Last week, we've talked about the coming tribulation that would test the spirit of the righteous all over the world. We need to increase our knowledge about the day of the Lord. Because religion have influenced a great majority of this world's population, the people don't have the correct understanding about the day of the Lord. A lot of people confuse the day of the Lord with the great tribulation. A lot will happen when the great tribulation ends and the day of the Lord starts. Last week you learned that the great tribulation is a time of testing for the righteous. The Satans will have power to war with the people of the Most High. The Great Tribulation is the nation's final hour to war against the Most High and His people. The scriptures reveal to us that once the tribulation is over, deliverance have come to the Israelites who have been living in the land of their captivity. The Most High will gather His people from all the nations from where He had scattered them to put them back on their land. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whither I have driven them in mine anger and in my fury, and in great wrath, and I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. After the great tribulation, our deliverance have come. The regathering of our people will take place. 
the church teach that before the great tribulation takes place, the rapture will happen. The church failed to tell you where the people who are raptured away will go to wait out the tribulation period. The church teach that when you die, you go to heaven. Nowhere in the scriptures in the authorized Bible say that we go to heaven. The workers of iniquity use the scriptures that say when death takes place, the spirit returns to the most high to support their falsehoods. There's a scripture in the authorized Bible that talks about the poor man Lazarus when he died. The scriptures reveal to us that when the poor man Lazarus died, he went to Abraham's bosom. He didn't go to the heavens. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. The scripture said nothing about the poor man going to heaven when he died. The place Abraham and all the righteous dwell is in Sheol, the side reserved for the righteous. The scriptures in the authorized Bible let us know that the rich man was in hell on the side reserved for the wicked. The rich man can see Lazarus with Abraham. There was a separation between them. The book of Enoch confirmed the scriptures in the book of Luke. Enoch asked the angel that was with him what was the hallowed places he saw. The angel Raphael explained to Enoch that the hallowed places was the place reserved to receive the spirit of men that died. The angel Raphael explained the purpose of the four hallowed places. Then Raphael answered one of the holy angels who was with me and said unto me, These hallowed places have been created for this very purpose, that the spirits of the souls of the dead should assemble therein. Ye that all the souls of the children of man shall assemble here, and these places have been made to receive them till the day of their judgment, and till their appointed period, till the period appointed, till the great judgment comes upon them. Then I ask, regarding all the hallowed places, why is one separated from the other? And he answered me, saying, These three have been made that the spirits of the dead might be separated. And this division has been made for the spirits of the righteous in which there is the bright spring of water. And such has been made for sinners when they die and are buried in the earth and judgment has not been executed on them in their lifetime. Here their spirit shall be set apart in this great pain till the great day of judgment and punishment and torment of those who curse forever and retribution for their spirits. There he shall bind them forever. And such a division has been made for the spirits of those who make their suit, who make disclosures concerning their destruction, when they were slain in the days of the sinners. Such has been made for the spirits of men who were not righteous, but sinners, who were completely in transgression and of the transgressors. They shall be companions, but their spirits shall not be slain in the day of judgment, nor shall they be raised from thence. As you have heard, the spirit of men, when they depart from this earth, goes to one of the hallowed places reserved to receive the spirit of men. The righteous is on one side. The spirit of the people that died unjustly, like the spirit of Abel, was on another side, and so on. Nobody goes to heaven to be with the Most High when they die. That is why the rapture doctrine is false, because the Most High is not going to take you to heaven to wait for the great tribulation to end. All of us must face judgment before we can enter the coming kingdom. The workers of iniquity in high places deceive you into believing you will go to heaven to wait out the great tribulation. These are the false hope the doctrines from religion give to the people. The doctrines give the people a false reality. That is how Satan continued to deceive many with his lies. The people are not prepared for what is to come. The Most High would gather his people from where he placed them to put them back on their land after the great tribulation. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Paphros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath. 
than from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The Most High made multiple covenants with the Israelites. He gave his people the land of Canaan for a possession. The Israelites barely lived on the promised land before they were exiled. The king of Assyria took people from other nations to dwell in the land that belongs to the Israelites. These people continue to live on the promised land until this day. The workers of iniquity already deceived many with the false regathering of the imposters in 1948. The scripture said, when the Most High put his people back on their land, they would dwell there in safety and no one would make them afraid. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen. Neither shall the beast of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. And I will bring them out from the people, and gather them from the countries, and will bring them to their own land, and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers, and in all the inhabited places of the country. The imposters that dwell in the nation the synagogue of Satan made in 1948 don't have peace. Presently, there's war in that land. The mainstream media don't cover how many of the imposters have left the land. The scripture said the Israelites would dwell in their land and no one will make them afraid. Israelites, I hope you can see the many falsehoods and lies told to keep you enslaved. Remember, everything written must be fulfilled the way the Most High declare it for it to happen. The scripture said immediately after the tribulation, the word of God will return. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. The scripture said when Michael stands up, that is when we will be delivered. Everyone whose name is written in the Lamb's book of life. The scriptures in the book of Daniel said that the dead will rise at the time when Michael stands up. The scripture said that when Michael stands up, it will be a time of trouble. At the time of trouble, we will be delivered. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. The book of Jeremiah called the times of trouble, Jacob's trouble. The scriptures went on to say that the Most High would save us out of it. The book of Daniel confirms that when Michael stands up, it's the time of trouble. And at that time, we will be delivered, everyone whose name is written in the book. Not all Israelites and Gentiles will be delivered, only the people whose names is written in the book of life. The book of Matthew said immediately after the tribulation, the word of God will come. He will command his angels to gather his elect from the four corners of the world. We heard in the book of Isaiah how the Most High would stretch out his hand a second time to gather his people from the four corners of the world to put them back on their land. We just heard in the book of Matthew after the tribulation, when the word of God returns, he will command his angels to gather his elect. There's no escaping the tribulation period if you are alive at that time. Our deliverance come after our troubles. The synagogue of Satan made the people believe they will escape the wrath of the Most High coming on the earth to get many to bow down to Satan. That is how they are deceiving the people, making them believe they won't be held accountable for their actions. The scripture said everyone have to give an account for every word they said. The scripture said, all of us have to stand before the judgment seat of the Most High. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. How will you die and go to heaven and not be judged? How are you going to be raptured away to be in heaven when you're not judged yet? A good question to ask your religious leaders and all who support their doctrines. If Jesus took away your sins, why do you have to give an account to your every word? 
If you will be raptured away before the great tribulation, how come Jesus can't save you from judgment? If Jesus did everything for you, like taking away the sins of the world, why is the wrath of the Most High coming upon all the nations? The day of the Lord comes immediately after the great tribulation. Israelites, we can't allow Satan's deceptions to deceive us anymore. We must take heed to the truth the Most High is revealing at this hour. Judah, the son of Jacob, prophesied to his children that when his children repent with a pure heart, the Most High will bring them out of captivity and the Prince of Peace shall rise. Until the Lord visit you, when with perfect heart ye repent and walk in all of his commandments, and he bring you up from captivity among the Gentiles. And after these things shall a star rise to you from Jacob in peace. After the time of trouble, the Most High will gather us from everywhere he sent us to put us back on our land. The time of our judgment have come to an end. Remember, the Most High said that he would punish us for all of our iniquities. Living in the land of our captivity was judgment. Being scattered and being oppressed by the heathens was judgment. The Most High said he would judge us for all of our sins. It doesn't matter if you accepted the Messiah that came in his own name as your Lord and Savior to take away your sins. The Most High said he would punish us for all of our iniquities. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Israelites, this is why as a people we've endured many hardship. We was being judged for our sins and the sins of our fathers. The scattering and persecution of our people is judgment as well as sanctification period for us. The most I have to test us to purify us for the coming kingdom. He will also purge the rebels from among us. This is why it's important for us to repent with a pure heart. The regathering of our people is our deliverance. We look forward to this day because that is when we will finally be able to live without oppression. The Israelites alive during the great tribulation will endure a lot before they are delivered. When the end of the tribulation is over, the Most High will gather his people from everywhere he has sent them. All the righteous to put them back on their land. While we are rejoicing and happy to be delivered, the Gentiles have to meet the word of God in the valley of Jehoshaphat to be judged for all of their iniquities towards the Israelites and parting his land. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. The Gentiles haven't been held accountable for their sins and the sins of their fathers. Israelites, this is why they want to prolong our awakening. Our redemption means judgment for the nations. Because as soon as the Most High send the word of God to gather his elect from the four corners of the world, after the tribulation, the day of the Lord have come. The Gentile nations that conspired together to cut us off from being a nation and parted the Most High's land will be held accountable for their sins. The wrath of the Most High will come upon all the heathens. That is why the Most High is revealing the truth for all to hear to give everyone an opportunity to repent. The people won't hear this truth in the church or in the beast system. That is why the gospel of the kingdom needs to be heard by everyone before the end comes. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. After hearing the truth, if they continue in their iniquities, the scriptures confirm most Gentiles won't repent. Their blood will be on their own hands. The Gentiles that want to serve the Most High in the spirit and in the truth will only hear the truth if they cleave to the Israelites. Their nations who have made Satan their God will only lie to them. The scripture said a time will come when the Gentiles will say, we've inherited lies. By then it will be too late. O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Notice that the scripture said at the day of their affliction, they will say they've inherited lies. 
Right now, most Gentiles are full of pride. They believe they've replaced the natural branches. They believe they are blessed and highly favored. They believe they are chosen because they've inherited the earth. Right now, some Gentiles don't believe us. A great majority is helping Satan censor our voices. They continue to rob us and treat us any way they want. On the day of their affliction, they will come to the realization they've inherited lies. The Gentiles will only know the truth through the gospel of the kingdom that is being heard right now. The Gentiles always had the opportunity to know the Most High. The individuals from the Gentile nations who choose to serve the God of Israel will cleave. They will be the ones that will help to put us back on our land, just as it state in the book of Isaiah. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. And the stranger shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them, and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. The strangers that take heed to the warnings and cleave to the Israelites will inherit the coming kingdom with the Israelites. The regathering of the twelve tribes will remove the Israelites from the wrath of the Most High that is coming upon the nations on the day of the Lord. The day that is reserved to judge all the nations that conspired against the Israelites. The wars and destabilization of countries all over the world will happen because at the end times, nations will rise against other nations. There will be wars, disasters, and famines everywhere. These things will happen in the end times. The Israelites won't be around when the Most High judge the nations on the day of the Lord. They will dwell safely on their own land when the word of God delivered them at the end of the tribulation period. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen. Neither shall the beast of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. The workers of iniquity give the wicked nations false hope with the pre-tribulation rapture. The feel-good doctrine is blinding the eyes of many. The workers of iniquity use the regathering of the twelve tribes to support their rapture doctrine. The Gentiles can't escape the wrath of the Most High that is coming upon the nations. The times of the Gentiles will come to an end. The Most High said, as they have done, it will be done unto them. False doctrines won't save anyone from the wrath of the Most High. Creating an idol to give you salvation would not save you from the wrath of the Most High. Israelites, it's important for you to recognize the signs of the times. The Satans used the high-level workers of iniquity to lie to the people from the very beginning. They inserted their falsehoods into the scriptures to deceive the people to worship Satan. The time have come for the inhabitants of the earth to stop letting the Satans deceive them. Let the Holy Spirit that abide with you lead you back to the Father. Only the Holy Spirit can tell you the desires of the Most High. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Israelites, take advantage of the truth while it's available. You can only find the truth if you return to the Father. The day of the Lord is coming upon the heathens. My prayer is for the will of the Most High to be done. Stay tuned for part two. The Lord liveth. And blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God that avengeth me, and subdueth the people under me. He delivereth me from mine enemies, yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name.